Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Flow Chart of Instruction Cycle. In this video, I will be talking about the various phases of the instruction cycle and what is the basic computer instruction format and then the flow chart. Let us begin. What is instruction? See, whenever you are writing any program, right? So that program consists of a multiple instructions. So the collection of all those instructions that is known as a program and a program residing in the memory unit of a computer, right? And as I've told you, it is actually a sequence of instructions. So these instructions are executed by the processor going through a cycle for each instruction and each instruction cycle in turn that is subdivided into sequence of sub cycles or phases. So in the case of the basic computer, each instruction cycle consists of four phases, four phases, fetch, decode, read address from the memory and then execute. So these four phases are fetching instruction from memory, then decoding it, reading the effective address and executing the instruction. And upon the completion of this fourth step, right, which is about the execution, the control goes back to the step number one, which is about fetching the instruction. And it executes, decode and execute the next instruction. And this particular process, it continues until unless the halt instruction is not encountered. So when there is a uh, availability of the halt instruction, the program will stop. Now, let us talk about the basic computer instruction format. So the instruction length of a basic computer, this is of 16 bit and 16 bit instruction of basic computer, it has three fields. The three fields are mode, opcode and operand, which is the address. So address, it starts from zero up to 11, means 12 bits. Opcode starts from 12, goes up to 14, three bits and mode this is for the 15th bit so this is how there are three fields so mode field means msp bit number 15 of the 16 bit instruction and if the value of this mode this is zero it means the direct addressing and the value of one will be for the indirect addressing opcode is of three bits right bit number 12 13 and 14 and opcode defines which particular operation is to be performed and operand it contains 12 bit the address starts from 0 to 11 there are total 12 bits so the basic computers has three instruction code formats and the type of instruction is recognized by the computer control from four bit positions 12 to 15 because all the remaining are uh, representing the address and there are three types of instruction formats memory reference instruction register reference instruction and input output instruction as you can see this is the basic computer instruction format three fields and i've already told you that address it starts from bit number 0 to 11 opcode is from bit number 12 to 14 and mode is for the bit number 15 means opcode is of three bits so here three bits means eight possible combinations 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 uh, this is 0 1 1 fifth one 1 double 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and at the last triple one if we say this is d naught next is d1 d2 d3 so this last will be d7 so we can bifurcate from here means just to understand the types of instruction format. Let me tell you, if you see the first one about which we are talking memory reference instruction, here the opcode may have any value from D0 to D6 and the value of I, it may be 0 or 1. So when the value of I is 0, direct addressing mode, otherwise it is the indirect one. So here, this is known as a memory reference instruction. Next is about the register reference instruction. Here, this opcode is nothing but D7. You can see triple one, but the mode is 0. That is why this is register reference instruction. 
In the third case, this is D7 triple 1, but the mode is 1 and this is known as an input-output instruction. So, you must remember it, then only you will be able to explain the flowchart. Now, let us draw the flowchart. This is the flowchart of the instruction cycle as you can see over here. And all the three instructions I have listed out over here, memory reference, register reference, input output reference, just you need to remember the opcode is from 0 to D0 to D6. Here it is D7 and in the last case it is also D7. As you can see in this particular diagram or you are already aware that there are four subfaces, right, sub cycles, fetch, decode, read the effective address and execute. So let us begin from the uh, initial point. Initially, the program counter PC that is loaded with the address of the first instruction in the program. You are aware with what is the function of PC. And the sequence counter, this SC that is clear to zero means providing a decode timing signal. This decode timing signal is what? T0. And after each clock pulse, sequence counter is incremented by 1. It means the timing signal, it goes through a sequence T0, then T1, then T2, like so on. So here, the micro operation for the fetch and decode phases, you can understand, right? So as I've told you, initially sequence counter is clear to 0. This is what the fetch cycle and you are aware that AR is what? AR is the address register. Since only one address register, the only address register is connected to the address inputs of the memory. It means there is a requirement to transfer the address from program counter PC to the address register during the clock transition, which is associated with this as timing T0. Means here the value that is being transferred from PC to AR. And the instruction read from memory is then placed in the instruction register. You can see memory AR. So here the instruction read from memory. You know uh, inside this bracket that defines the memory location. It is then pl placed in the instruction register with the clock transition associated with the timing is what here timing T1. At the same time PC is incremented by 1 PC plus 1 right. It is incremented by 1 to prepare it for the address for the next instruction in the program, right? And at time T2, now you can see the operation code IR that is being decoded. Decode operation code means this is what the decode cycle. And the indirect bit is transferred to the flip-flop I. Here you can see indirect bit is transferred to the flip-flop I. And the address part of the instruction that is transferred to AR address part means 12 bits starting from 0 to 11 that is being transferred to AR and at the same time you can notice that the sequence counter is incremented even after each clock pulse to produce the same sequence T1 sorry T0, T1, T2. Here you can identify IR right 12 to 14 bits 12 to 14 bits means about the opcode and as I have told you that for 3 bits opcode there are 8 possible combinations starting from this up to 111. So last one is what D7 we have written. So you can identify here decision is to be taken. When the D7 bit is 1, D7 bit is 1 for these two cases for register reference and for input output reference. So you can see when D7 bit is 1 either register reference or input output. When D7 bit is 0, it means it is not D7. It may be anything D0, D1, D2 up to D6. So it is from D0 to D6, any particular combination that is for the memory references. Let me take this left hand side portion. When D7 is 1, now you can see when the D7 is 1 and mode is 0. It means again one more decision is to be taken for this particular bit. Either 0 or 1 you can see. When this is equal to 0 means it is nothing but the register reference instruction. Register reference T3 cycle execute register reference instruction. And then I will be telling you why this SC is 0. 
But when the value of i is 1, the value of i is 1 means the third case which is the input output instruction when this is 1 means execute input output instruction. And here at the same time you can see when d7 is 0 it means either d0, d1, d2 up to d6. Now you know that in this particular case it depends upon the value of i whether the direct or indirect mode addressing. So here again the decision box is being uh, like taken when it is equal to 0 it means direct addressing direct means nothing is to be done over here direct data is available and execute memory reference instruction but when it is equal to 1 it means the indirect addressing indirect addressing means now the data is to be copied or read from the memory location and that to be transferred into the address register so here the data is available in the memory so that is why this is known as an indirect and it is to be copied and then execute memory reference instruction right and at the end in each of these three cases whether it is input output instruction or register reference instruction or memory reference instruction so after the instruction is executed the sequence counter is cleared you can see in all these cases and the control returns to the fetch phase here you can see the control returns to the fetch phase here this control it means with t naught that is equal to one so this is how you can explain the flow chart of the instruction cycle but to explain it you must be aware about what are the various sub cycles and what are the three different types of instruction formats thank you so much for watching this video